In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Lamont Wiltsey was a fellow priest and friend during my 10, day, 10 years of serving in the Diocese of El Camino Real, meaning the King's Highway. Now, Father Wiltsey was a little eccentric, but aren't all priests a little? Perhaps not Father John, of course. But I guess the kind word to describe Father Wiltsey is that he was a Renaissance man. He really was. He was a very fine artist, an excellent musician on the guitar and the Steinway that was in his living room. He was an architect. He designed the home that he lives in, in Carmel Valley. A gourmet cook, an expert, or at least he was a good drinker of vintage wine. And in his 60s, he got married for the first time and decided that he would go and earn a doctorate in theology, which he did. And I guess what makes him a little eccentric is that he also kept and rode a mule. Kind of unusual, I suppose. Father Lamont was also a gifted preacher and a wonderful Bible teacher. I had him teach a New Testament class for me one time, and he kept referring to the disciples as the disciples. And one of the ladies in the class finally said, Father Lamont, why do you refer to the disciples as the disciples? And he says, mainly because they never seemed to get it, did they? And they didn't. You know, Jesus chose them and then spent three years teaching them and leading them around in ministry but quite often they just never really saw the glory of Jesus. Disciples. And Jesus did very little without telegraphing to his disciples what he was going to do, do next. Before he would go off to pray, he would say, I'm going off yonder to pray. Love that word, yonder. You don't hear it much in the north, but in the south you hear it quite often. It means way over there, but not out of sight. So anyway, he was going to go off to pray, and he told them that, and yet I'm sure they were still feared with a little bit of trepidation that Jesus was leaving them for a while. He told them why he was going into villages, and he made it abundantly clear on three different occasions why he had to go to Jerusalem to lay down his, his life for the salvation of the whole world. Duh, did they get it? No. Finally, at one point said, no, Jesus, heaven forbid that you would do that. And remember what Jesus said? He turned to him and said, and get behind me, Satan. The duh disciples, Father Lamont was correct. They were the disciples. Quite often huddled in fear, wandering back to old lives after Jesus' death and resurrection, continuing to look upward instead of outward. And yet these were the guys that Jesus chose. And he chose them for a purpose that they were yet to fulfill. He chose them for a purpose. Now, some of you guys mainly probably know that the most powerful car on the face of the earth is a double A fuel dragster, like the one driven by Ashley Force, 15,000 horsepower, zero to 330 miles an hour, three seconds. The most powerful computer is now built, well, as we would all suspect, by the Chinese. It's able to process 93,000 trillion 
bits of information every second. And still the most powerful rocket ever created was fortunately created by we Americans, the Saturn V that produced 7.5 million pounds of thrust. But the dragster needs a hundred dollar battery to get it started. And if that battery is dead, that car is going nowhere. Someone has to take the power cord from that Chinese computer and plug it into the wall or it's just going to be a lump sitting there in the room. And the rocket requires ignition before it can leave the pad. How many of us in the 60s stayed up at night waiting for those Saturn rockets to take off only to, for Houston to announce there is no ignition? And when the day of Pentecost had come, all of the disciples were together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Houston, we have liftoff. Psalm 104, you sent forth your spirit and they are created and so you renew the face of the earth. And then further down, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. And Peter who had denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times that he knew his Lord, is now able by the power of the Holy Spirit to preach from the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says that I will pour, faith, pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Disciples no longer, spirit-filled apostles outward leaning in mission. Perhaps some of you remember that the build-up to what we still call the new prayer book, even though it's 39 years old now, remember the green book, the tan book, the stripe book, and many other books. But at one point, boy, did they ever miss up and mess up the ordination service. I actually saw one in which this was used. At the point of the service in which the ordinan is presented, the bishop asks the congregation, is he worthy? And the congregation thundered back three times, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. What total nonsense. Remember that, Father John? What total nonsense. No one is worthy, yet God works through our unworthiness. It's his Holy Spirit, it's his ministry, not ours. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, may our prayer be a earnest and yet simple one. Here I am, Lord, send me. Fill me anew with your Holy Spirit and use me to the building up of your kingdom. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.